G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday evening here in Australia and we can see Bitcoin has sort of come back a little bit. The market has retraced and I wouldn't be surprised if we retraced a little bit more. Now, how far we're going to go down is going to be the question. And also, will this even last or are we just going to simply, you know, power on through? We have had, I think, about nine green days in a row uh, for Bitcoin, which is sort of unusual. There's normally a pullback somewhere in there, but we'll get to that very shortly. Let's have a look. How's the market in general doing? All right, $1.54 trillion, sorry. So hanging above that $1.5 trillion level, we'll have to wait and see whether we can hold that. Bitcoin dominance down a little bit again, 46%. So we're up around sort of 48%. And look, Guay price is starting to move up already. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the uh, hard London hard fork, uh, EIP 1559 and uh, those sort of things that are supposed to be coming very soon, I think. Uh, EIP 1559 is August 4th. So we're literally only a few days away from it. Because again, $1.78 is not too bad unless you're sending five dollars worth of ETH then it's just yeah it's too much that so definitely needs to come down and yeah we it's going to be a big moment for ETH to see whether it can bring it down lower because that's great for people who've got you know a couple of hundred dollars worth or a couple of thousand dollars worth of ethereum or whatever that they're sending they're not going to worry too much about you know it costing them two dollars to, to send it but if we want that worldwide adoption particularly to third world nations and things like that they're not going to want to pay $2. Uh, they might only be sending a couple of dollars. So that just doesn't work. So yeah, in the next few days, we're going to know sort of where Ethereum's at with that EIP 1559. And then, you know, if unfortunately that doesn't bring it down to again, you know, at least it's got to be under a dollar. If it's over a dollar, it's just too much, uh, you know, in general, let alone for, you know, mass adoption. For mass adoption, it really needs to be super cheaper. So keeping keeping an eye on that. But let's have a look. Bit of a mixed bag here at the moment. So some things are up, some things are down. But again, overall, the market is down 1%. So what's done well then in the last 24 hours? The market's up, so there should be a couple of movers. Right, Flow had a nice move, 15%. Quant uh, had a nice... Uh, move same with ontology solana so we got a few coins there that are doing all right even uniswap had a little bit of a pump and again we had some news about you know uniswap maybe uh, teaming up with paypal and uh, a couple other places so that'll be very interesting to sort of keep an eye on and we've got a and i've got a couple of stories that are all sort of similar that may sort of be maybe kind of you know basically saying that it is true that Uniswap is likely to partner up with them because uh, there was some you know there was an article that said you know they were going to or there was a deleted video that was on YouTube and then Uniswap came out and said look we removed it because we didn't want people to think that we had a partnership with them I currently but I get the feeling like it is coming but look couple of green you know really one double digit a couple of high single digits uh, and then we're just into the low single digits and that's pretty much stock standard considering the market actually was down only one percent though so nothing kind of major so let's have a look at losses then what about losses were there any bad ones ah uh, safe moon look they're down they're almost at zero so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Literally zero point zero 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 two uh, of a cent. Uh, I mean, it looks like it just kind of fell off a bridge there. And you know, can it go much lower? Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm glad I never got uh, involved in Safe Moon. Look, engines down, Terra Luna's down, Celsius Networks down. So we definitely got a, a, a few, you know, kind of retracements there, but nothing kind of too drastic. Only a couple of percent, so it's not the end of the world, but I just get the feeling like we might see some more downside over the weekend. And how do we find out where it's going to go to? Well, we simply come over here and we have a look at the Bitcoin chart because that is generally the best indicator. Right, so we have had a red candle uh, and it'll be interesting to see where that goes. But how many greens do we have in a row? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine we did have nine green candles but that last one was a total indecision candle and now the retracement's happening and we've got to wait and see where it's going to come i'm going to say probably somewhere down around about here would be uh pretty kind of expected thirty six thousand nine hundred, so about thirty seven thousand. but look just prepare yourself it could go lower but 
I've seen the Wyckoff accumulation uh, sort of you know chart measured over this, and it would look like we're only going to get a bit of a small pullback. So, i.e., probably to here around thirty six thousand nine hundred and fifteen ish thereabouts. Let's just say thirty six thousand nine hundred before it starts to move back up. If the Wyckoff accumulation is actually in effect, because it looks very similar at the moment, but it's not exact. So again, we'll have to wait and see. But overall, things are still looking pretty good. You know, there was a bit of volume there. Uh, now it's starting to dry up a little bit, but that'll be, you know, until the next move upwards and then everyone will jump back on it. Uh, and that's generally the way it goes. So, you know, we're getting so close to being back in this sort of range where we were before. And look, the 200-day moving average is not too far away. Uh, interesting times, but again, I'm not getting too ahead of myself just yet. I'm not like getting overly bearish either but I'm not getting overly kind of bullish. I still think we are in a bull market. This is just a sort of, you know, what they would call healthy correction within a bull market. No one would be thinking it's too healthy when they're going through it. But overall, for the longevity of the bull run, it would be considered quite healthy because you can't just constantly go up. You know, as much as we'd all like it to, that is where, you know, it just, it won't last. And the harder and higher something goes up, without any kind of corrections, then the bigger the downfall, unfortunately. So that is what you need to remember. And that's not just like Bitcoin or crypto, that's just anything. They can't just constantly rock it up. And if they're rocketing up really hard and it's been going for a prolonged period, good chance it's about to have, uh, have a, again, what they might call healthy correction. All right, some interesting stories. So Litecoin, all right, Litecoin sparks crypto adoption with big e-retailer on board. So online tech retailer Newegg has announced it will be accepting Litecoin as a form of payment for customers who use BitPay on their platform. So again, we're getting a lot of stories like this with cryptocurrencies sort of starting to be adopted. You know, big banks, big businesses as actual payment rails and things like that. And again, we've got some PayPal information coming up. So very, very interesting. And this is good for Litecoin because they've been a little bit quiet not a whole lot going on, at least in the news. And so, you know, for Litecoin to really last, because it's been going down against Bitcoin for a long time, it really hasn't been sort of, you know, gaining any ground on it. Uh, it really does need to have some some new innovation coming towards it. And I mean, they've got Mimble Wimble, and we'll have to wait and see how well that goes. And if Mimble Wimble goes well, then again, that'll probably find its way over to the uh, Bitcoin uh, chain fairly quickly after not you know again it needs to go through a little bit of rigor first but if it works out well then uh, that's usually the way it works Litecoin is almost a test net for bitcoin the way kasama is a test net for polka dot not exactly the same but somewhat similar right so let's get on to the paypal news so paypal ceo dan shulman announced that a new super app wallet is on its way to ensure additional crypto capability for users. So it looks like they're going to bring DeFi to PayPal. So PayPal will reportedly take another step in its cryptocurrency endeavors and roll out a super app wallet for its American users. The company will launch the upgraded version in the next coupling of month, couple next coupling, next couple of months. So this is Crypto Potato saying that it's only coming to Americans, but then we can jump over here and PayPal set to launch crypto trading in the UK and may embrace DeFi. So you got to remember, PayPal's only been selling crypto to the Americans, to their to their home base, let's say, you know, the Americans, to America. And it looks like they're now finally ready to open it up to the UK and, and it's still got the rest of the world to go. That is what is really scary. They've made a ton of money from selling crypto in America alone. Now they're going to let it go to the UK and then eventually it will feed out everywhere. And they're looking at bringing on DeFi. That's very, very interesting. So according to the company's second quarter earnings call on Wednesday, Pal, 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 I'm struggling, good Lord. PayPal has done very well out of crypto trading for the period. CEO Dan Shulman stated that the US is likely to be the next country where crypto trade, sorry, UK is likely to be the next country where crypto uh, trading is offered. And then it goes down here to say basically they're looking to bring DeFi applications as well. It says there's some interesting ones. So again, we heard that report about maybe Uniswap is going to be on PayPal. So very, very interesting. I think, you know, the writing's on the wall. These things are happening. They're just not ready to, 
you know, fully bring it out yet and let everyone know that that's what's happening, but super interesting. And then even more pay, pay. how can I not say this? Come on, PayPal news. So PayPal CEO Dan Shulman raises the possibility of using digital wallets to distribute stimulus funds rather than the current slow and expensive banking system. So Dan Shulman said digital wallets could be a solution to stimulus bottlenecks. So we know over in the States at least they've had a lot of problems with getting the money. They've had to, you know, mail out checks and things like that. This new super app that, you know, super app wallet or super wallet app, I forget which one they said it was, coming out could be very, very interesting. Not just for the US though, like for the entire world. It looks like PayPal is going to have a real crack at taking on banks, not just being a payment system, but being a one-stop shop. So payment rail and bank all in one. So Shulman also alluded to the promise of DeFi on the earnings call. So again, you know, Uniswap, and there's going to be a whole stack of other things uh, coming, I have no doubt. Uh, it won't just be Uniswap, you know, again, Aave has been doing their uh, Aave Pro, so where it's all KYC and regulated and everything, that could be something that gets on there. And who knows else what? Who knows else what? Who knows what else? Oh, God. Uh, anyone would think I'm drunk at the moment. I simply cannot speak. This is actually quite embarrassing. But I'll forge on. Uh, I won't just leave you right there. All right. I just noticed this today when I turned on my phone. I used Blockfolio. And then all of a sudden, my Blockfolio was missing. And I was like, what? Where is it? And I had an FTX app there. And I was like, I I'm not on FTX. Then I realized what was going on. So Blockfolio has officially rebranded to FTX as a final step of its acquisition since last year. So if you had your Blockfolio app, it's no longer Blockfolio, it's now FTX. Don't worry, uh, it, it's still doing everything it's supposed to. Just obviously FTX bought them out uh, and they have changed. So worry not, but again, it shows where FTX is going. They really are starting to move fast. But there's something, oh, excuse me, very interesting about you know FTX's valuation. So large VCs are sidelining smaller crypto investors, says a uh, PwC uh, crypto report. So inflated valuations for crypto businesses have raised the bar for small investors to participate in ongoing innovation. This happened back in 2017. Like early on, the ICOs coming out weren't, you know, overly expensive to get into and as that year went on ICO just the prices to buy into them went up and up and up and up and as it gets you know it feels like it's getting close to being the you know the more tail end of this bull run you know we're probably closer to the end than we are to the start the valuations of everything are going to go up you know massively and new projects coming out the price to just simply get in is going to be more and more expensive for me, this is the lesson I learned from 2017. It's not a, it's not bad to get into things at the moment, but if you're holding long term, you really need to be ready for them to be worth a whole lot less than uh, what they are when they come out. I'm talking about new projects, like even the older projects. Obviously, when a bear market comes, they're going to have a significant dip. How much uh, is yet to be seen? But any new projects that are coming out up until this bull run ends, you know. I can't offer you financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor, but if you get a double a double or a triple, like double your money, three extra money, get your initial back because when this thing goes, you know, sort of pop, and it's not that it's like a full-on bubble and it pops and goes to nothing, but it's going to get overheated, and then when it comes back and retraces, you know, you may have bought this new Fandangle token, and on day one it was a $1.50, uh, and then possibly goes all the way up to $15, and you think, oh, it's never going to go back to that price, and then all of a sudden when the bear market comes, that thing literally goes down to cents. That is what happened to ICOs that came out in late 2017. I kid you not, I was there, I did it, I experienced it. So just be very careful chasing new projects in this late end uh, and not getting your initial capital back. Unless, you know, you know, if you fully believe in it, you think this is the new thing you're holding for the next 10 years and you don't care what happens to the price, so be it. But for me, I would be taking them profits fairly quickly because the end will come sooner than you think. And unfortunately, you know, any new project that came out in the last few months of crypto will likely, again, no guarantees in life, but will likely get absolutely crushed. Right, Robinhood. So they finally uh, 
release their stock. So Robinhood stock debuts at $38. It dropped pretty quickly to $0.09 cents before recovering a little. And Kathy Woods from ARK Invest, she invested. So it'll be interesting to see if she's uh, still feeling okay. And I'm not sure where the price is right now. Uh, this was, you know, it, it's today's news, but I just don't know how old it was, uh, how old this is now. But you know, nine percent is probably not too bad. But in the stock world, nine percent, and that's what you got to remember. This is the stock world we're talking about, not the crypto world. Nine percent is a fair bit, and that would, you know, be hurting a few people. Similar to Coinbase stock, you know, when it came out, uh, it, you know, rocketed up and then just. Dumped. I think it was four hundred dollars nearly, and then got down to I think two hundred, maybe even under two hundred. And I'm not even sure where Coinbase is at the moment. But Kathy Woods from Ark Invest, you know, she's a pretty smart lady, and I would guess that she's investing more for the long term rather than the short term. But you know, we'll see. All right, State Street, one of America's oldest banks, is expanding its crypto-related services to the bank's private fund clients. So again, these old banks, they can all see what's coming. There's literally not going to be a bank that is not going to get on board with this stuff. There won't be one. And that one bank that doesn't do it, or two or three banks, however many don't, you won't see them within the next 10 to 15 years. And that's the truth. They'll just, they will either have to get on board, they will have no choice, or they will get left behind. Crypto is not going anywhere. It's not going to zero some projects may absolutely go to zero but crypto itself is here to stay it is the new financial system that everything will be based off in the future and i mean everything there won't be anything that's not based around crypto it is the new money it's the hardest money that we have you know it's fixed supply you know any stock you buy from a company whenever they want to raise more funding they just produce more stock and then if you're holding the stock and they double it or triple it, you get two or three times as many, which is great, but it dilutes the value. That's how stocks work. Crypto does not work like that. They're divisible by, you know, sometimes a million kind of uh, pieces, sometimes even more. So that is more how they can be split up, but they are fixed. Short of a vote, you know, of everyone who owns the uh, cryptos getting together and there has to be a majority vote, it wouldn't just be 51%, it would probably be, have to be something more like 70% or something. Again, I don't know the governance to all of them, but outside of a big massive yes vote like that, they're not going to create more. Some are always creating more and then burning, like Ethereum is going to go to that. It'll be deflationary at times, but then other times they'll be making more of it. But most cryptos, they are capped. 100 million, 16 million, 21 million, you know, 100 billion, whatever it may be, but there will be no more. That is it. And that is why they are solid money and they are the solidest investment that we've ever had. Gold used to be it, but we keep finding more gold. As soon as the gold price goes up, they specifically go and mine more. They look for more because there's more money in it. When it goes down, they slow it all down and stop doing it. We don't know how much gold is left on the earth. And then they suspect, because I don't think anyone knows for sure, but they suspect that there's a whole stack of gold out there sort of in space and in the universe and that. So it's almost an unlimited supply. Whereas crypto, 99% of them are capped and that is it outside of stable coins and things like that. Hence why I have been very bullish on crypto and it took me a while to get my head around it and get onto it because I was highly suspicious of it and you know thought it was funny money and just all you know, smoke and mirrors when I initially got into it. Uh, took me many months of sort of, you know, reading over it before I made my first buy. But once I did, I've never looked back. And uh, yeah, I'm really glad I got into this space. And, you know, my personal opinion is this is the future. You know, time will tell, but at the moment it's looking pretty good. All right, last but not least, and this is massive. I, I, I was holding this for last. So synthetics turns on layer 2 alpha and launches Olympic betting on options platform. So they've had layer 2 for the staking. You could stake, but you couldn't do anything else. You still had to go back to layer 1 to use the exchange. Quenta uh, is the exchange. And, you know, the fees on layer you know, layer 1 were just too expensive. But now, Synthetics is ready to go and I am super stoked. I was very worried about that Uniswap stuff that happened the other day. But like I said, I learned that that was just the front end where they were taking it down. So i.e. the Uniswap website, you can't actually shut Synthetics down and you can't remove it from Uniswap because they actually are decentralized. 
Now, there's still all sorts of regulatory things that could happen and make it very hard for synthetics. But again, I just don't know how that plays out. But what I do see on synthetics, uh, I really do like. So I'm still putting my money where my mouth is. It's time to buy synthetics for me. Again, you do you. You work it out for yourself. It's very cheap at the moment considering where it was. I think it's about $9. It was down at $5 and it could absolutely go lower. But I think long term, short of, you know, regulation really cracking down on it and i think they're going to find ways to regulate it rather than sort of ban it uh, i think there's a massive future for synthetics uh, so i'm super bullish on it and we go down to here the long-awaited launch was announced by the synthetic protocol exchange quenta on july 30th that's today it enables the exchange to offer faster transactions and lower fees using optimistic roll-up technology Initially, there's only four synthetic assets that you can sort of trade on, uh, and that is SUSD, SETH, SBTC, and SLINK. I bought uh, a reasonable amount of SDFI uh, a long time ago when I was using synthetics, and it was super cheap. Uh, I can't wait for them uh, to bring that back and fit to finally my finally uh, make its way on there so here it says trading on layer 2 will offer users an estimated 50x reduction in gas fees and blazing fast transaction speeds now when I've done my staking it has been super fast and super cheap I mean we're talking I don't even know if it was cents it was probably less than a cent you know we're talking you know points of a percent uh, points of a cent sorry uh, to do anything in the transactions were almost instantaneous so massive news for synthetics and it'll be very very interesting to see where it goes from here because I, th I think you know i really do like synthetics uh and you know i'll probably like it even more because you know the co-founder sort of founder uh is an australian and obviously i want to support uh good australian products uh really it is just the regulatory stuff that i'm sort of worried about but it says here it feels surreal to finally be here DeFi summer 2.0 optimistics uh, optimistic roll-ups uh, OE edition begins I can't wait I get the feeling there is going to be a massive DeFi summer again I think this is what's going to change things more than anything I think gaming is going to be huge I think you know uh, things like Oh, v chain you know supply chain and all that's going to be massive and just you know money in general but i really think the DeFi space is where it's going to be at i think that will be the most revolutionary thing uh for crypto overall and if you get on the right ones and i'm not saying synthetics is the right one i just think it's the right one out of a couple of others you know chain link i don't really consider that DeFi, but anyway uh Aave synthetics chain link uh, i think they really are yeah they're miles ahead uh they have just set a new benchmark they've introduced something new they are massively disruptive and yeah i think they are going to have amazing futures but only time will tell all right look that's it from me again just beware i think there's probably going to be a bit more of a retracement this time it could go below thirty six thousand. we could come back down to 34 32 thousand, but i don't think it'll last long before we start to make our way back up again all right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that gain train, although there was a little bit of a pullback, but that was more in Bitcoin. We still had some altcoins that were doing well. And I'll see you next time.